Hi there, this is Dale Scrimshaw again. Probably giving you guys more than you really wanted, but uh, here's one more Excel spreadsheet. This is a very simplified uh, way to do your decision table. I've really cut this one down. You'll notice uh, the yellow area, those is where I would put in my alternatives and the probabilities if it's given to me and my states of nature. I've cut this down to just two states of nature because that's what you have in your problems uh, for uh, homework three. And I've cut this down to just three alternatives because I think that's all you have uh, in your homework. So I would put in my uh, alternative decisions here. And you see I've already put these in, large plant, small plant, nothing, a favorable market, unfavorable market. That's our example for Thompson. Over here I have, I'm looking for the row maximum in each, in each of these alternatives. Here I'm looking for the row minimum in each alternative. Here I'm looking for the weighted average and I want to have an alpha value in here. Here I'm looking for equally likely, which is the average, and it says division by zero because right now I'm saying take the average of these two and since there's nothing in there, I'm dividing by zero. That'll go away here in a moment. Here I'm doing my expected monetary value. Of course, I'll need probabilities here and here. And then what I'm doing here is these are my uh, decision types. Maxi-max, maxi-min, criteria of realism, equally likely, mini-max regret, and the expected monetary value, the expected value with perfect information, and the expected value of the perfect information. Down here I'm calculating my opportunities lost. This is a copy. It, it copies right down from here. Whatever I put in here is going to copy down here. That's why I put it in green uh, because I don't have to put that value, uh, those, that information in. Here, this area is going to copy right down from here. Right now it says zeros because there's nothing in this area. I streamlined this. If I was going to do a really formal type of sheet, I would have these cells show up blank when there's zeros in them so it doesn't disturb anybody and doesn't ask management ask you know, well, why is that zero so I would have it uh, structured and uh, the uh, formula in here would be such that there wouldn't be a zero it would be a blank same thing with all of these but I've streamlined it and I haven't done that uh, you do that with if statements if you're interested well let's put in our information we have for a favorable market uh, $200,000 is a state of nature. Let me get my right page up here so I don't make mistakes again. 200000 I have 100000 for constructing the uh, small plant as a favorable market and zero for do nothing. Notice my values are already starting to fill in because it's looking at, and I'm going to stop right here, this is looking at the row maximum, maximum here and here. Now, if I had three states of nature, I could insert a row here and change this formula to include that. Uh, here it's looking for the row minimum. Here it's looking for the weighted average. And here it's looking for the equally likely. Notice how the weighted average is. It's the max in the row times my alpha value plus the minimum in the row times 1 minus the alpha value. The dollar signs here and here, this freezes that cell so that when I copy this formula down, I still use the same cell reference. It makes it an absolute reference. Equally likely is looking at the average here. And EMV is still zero because I haven't put any probabilities in yet. Down here, what am I looking for? The maximum in this area, maximum D4, D6, maximum D4 through D6. Well, that is the maximum right now. So that's what I'm doing there. And notice it's copying right down here. And it's already starting to work out my opportunity loss. Uh, let's put in the next uh, values for the unfavorable market. It was minus 180,000. Uh, and for a small plant, it was minus 20,000. And for do nothing, it was zero. Now look, uh, what we've changed now a little bit. Here's my new row maximum for the small plant option. Here's my row minimum for the small plant option. Here's my weighted average for the small plant option. And here's my equally likely cal calculations. What's happened down here? 
This cell is looking for the maxi max, and the maxi max decision looks for the row maximum and it looks for the largest. So if I click here, what's it looking for? The maximum in this column. If I click here, what's it looking for? The maximum in this column. So I'm looking at maxi min maximizing my minimum loss, and that largest value is zero. Criterion of realism. Uh, let's see if I had, came up with that correct. Uh, criteria of realism. No, it looks like I have an error here. Oh, why? Because I do not have an alpha value in here yet. Let's put that alpha value in, and it's 0.8. Now, I have a criteria of realism of 124,000, and that's what we got in the text. See, I have to have that alpha value to get the weighted average. If I don't put that alpha value in, the way I've done this, I could have it not calculate anything here until there was an alpha value put in there. But I, And to do that, what I would do is I would put an if statement in here that said that if this was blank, leave this blank. And if this wasn't blank, then do this. And that's a little bit more complicated than I wanted to do this. It's, it, I want to keep this very simple. So I have to put my alpha value in there. That's the same reason there is no value in expected monetary value at this point. I don't have any percentages in here yet. Now down here, I have calculated already my, uh, alter my opportunity lost. How did I do that? Well, here I've got to go in and I've got to tell it what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to subtract the maximum in each column from the maximum in, uh, from the high, or I'm going to, I said that wrong. I'm going to subtract in each column uh, the highest value. Now, this area, you're going to have to put in yourself because you don't know which one of these will be the highest value. And remember, that's what you do for your state of nature. So I have it set up that I'm going to subtract B4 from B4. I'm going to subtract everything from this largest value. But if the largest value was here, then this formula would have to be changed. Okay? So the way I have it set up, I already know where my maximum values are. If I go over here, notice that it's C6 minus C4 because C6 is my largest value. And, and I'm subtracting everything from C6. So you have, to, you have to put this one in there correctly. Okay, then it will calculate the, uh, the maximums. And then my minimax regret looks for the minimum in this area. Now, what about my EMV? Why don't I have anything in there? Because I don't have any probabilities. Let's put those in. 0.5 and 0.5 was what he gave us for probabilities. Now, my expected monetary value is calculated. I have an uh, expected monetary value. It's the maximum in this column. My expected value with perfect information is calculated, and that's a formula. I'm looking at the maximum of B4, B6, maximum of B4 to B6 times the probability that's in B7 plus the maximum of C4, C6 times the probability that's in C7. And then I'm going to calculate my expected value with perfect information, which is the expected, uh, which is here, let me find this right, yes, E14. The uh, expected value with perfect information minus my expected va uh, expected monetary value. You can check those numbers uh, against what's in the uh, example. And as you set up your sheet, that's how you might want to do that. You know, set it up, get the right answers that are in in the example, and then use it for whatever you want to use it for. So that's a a more simple, and then I got I would save this under a new name. Right now I've just called it simplified Excel payoff table. But if I did this work and I wanted to save this, I would save it under a new name. Like maybe I might save this under Thompson's example. And then when I use my sheet again, it would uh, it would not be uh, would not have any values in it. Okay. That's a little short, uh, simplified payoff table. It'll do all your calculations for you.
any questions, you know, shoot me an email. Uh, later this evening, this is uh, Sunday, maybe later this evening, I will have out for you a review sheet for you to start on. If I don't, I'll get it out there early Monday morning sometime. Uh, also, bring that with you to Tuesday night's class with any questions. Thank you. Goodbye now.